Hi, it's Dave here. This is my wife, Kathy. Hello. This is The Cinemile. It's the podcast where we walk home from the movies. Today we're going to see a movie. It's called Challengers. It is... Um, I w- I've seen the trailer for this. Um, I would describe this as... Well, I've no idea really what the plot's about, but it looks to be either a sports movie or an erotic thriller. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure which I one it is. I hope it's both. <laughs> it's about tennis. I love watching tennis. It's the only sport I like. It starts it's the as only a, uh, sport you like. Yeah. What do you mean, like in general? In general, yes, yeah, the only sport I would. Oh, really you'll watch. watch you'll yeah. watch tennis. Um, stars Zendaya. Obviously, she's fab. Mike Faced. Don't know him. And Josh O'Connor of um, a film we saw a few years ago, Aisha. That Aisha. Was. Yeah, that was your number one of the year. It then. was. Yeah, he's yeah. largely better known, I believe, for The Crown. Oh yeah, it's, he was Prince Charles in The Crown, right? I we don't watch so. that. But it's written by Justin Kirkitzes, and do you know who he is? I don't. Tell me who that is. If one can be judged by who they're married to. And you do get judged favourably for being married to me. His wife is Celine Song. Oh my God, past from lives. Past Lives. Oh, wow. So if she was even in, Power the, couple. in the room with him when he wrote this, I'm excited to watch it. Do you think it. Celine touched this? <laughs> I think so. Celine touched the like, script for this movie. They definitely talked about it over dinner and she definitely gave him a few notes. Surely. And it's directed by Luca Guadagn- Guadagnino. Nailed it. And he directed <laughs> Call Me By Your Name, which I haven't seen, but it's hugely oh, critically that's acclaimed. very highly regarded. So anyway... That's the uh, t- Timothy Chalamet very <laughs> uh, big hitter, isn't it? I'm very interested in the film um, and love sports movies and love erotic thrillers, so here we go. Great. Do you remember seeing the trailer for this when you sat next to me in the cinema no, and it came on? I told you I see trailers, I don't watch them. <laughs> what is up with you? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, tune out. You sat... Like, how, did you, how could you tune out for Zendaya having um, very erotic trailer time <laughs> with two Two men. I just don't pay attention to trailers. I don't want to see them. I want to see the movie. They give everything away. How do you do it? It's, it's a magic. Trailer blindness. I wish I had it. Um, right, well, anyway, that's let's go. That's Can't it. wait. Everyone's talking about it, so it's the big movie of the weekend. I'm really looking forward to watching it. See you on the other side. Bye. You think that tennis is about expressing yourself, doing your thing. But you don't know what tennis is. What is it? Tashi Duncan. She's in another league. You're incredible today. Come on! To have a fashion line, a foundation, it's gonna turn a whole family into millionaires. What are you gonna do now? Unfortunately, my only skill in life is hitting a ball with a racket. I want you to be my coach. I want you to be my coach. How often does this happen? Going after the same girl? Come here. Which one of us? This is a game about winning the points that matter. I don't need to play my games with you. Come have a cigarette with me, I have to talk to you. I don't smoke, and I'm not talking to you. Hi, we're back, we've seen Challengers. And if it's your first time at the cinema, we won't spoil this movie until we turn on to Spoiler Street, which will be sign posted. There's real signs for it mm-hmm. in real life. Yeah, it's one kilometer away. <laughs> yeah. um, so, that was an amazing movie. That was movie. incredible. That was so good. <laughs> we're just, <laughs> we're dying. Wow. I'm absolutely buzzing. Buzzing? I'm charred. I'm, uh, I'm yeah. like, I'm... I could go play tennis now. Wow. And I can play tennis. The, the, in, the, what, a, that was a thrilling. <laughs> it was, it was so intense. Was... I was on the edge of my seat. Now Dave, what's the number one thing that a good sports movie should have? Um, a rivalry. What does this movie have? Is it one of the best I've ever An seen in my life? all-timer rivalry. All-time yeah. great sports movie rivalry. But what's so good about this movie, and le- le- allow me, dear listener, to try and sell this to you, <laughs> is um, th- this movie isn't just a... Um, this movie isn't just a, a rival a rivalry is a straight line this is a triangle there are there are <laughs> three people with very shifting power yeah, dynamics so throughout this movie and it is fascinating it's so it's and, such a, it's like a relationship movie and then it's a tennis movie the movie itself often throws in the dialogue you know the characters will ask each other are we talking about tennis <laughs> yeah the movie and movies like that the whole movie is both T- talking about tennis and not talking about tennis and that's the tennis matches are thrilling so because good. of what has happened off the court yeah. and I think I gotta say at first this movie doesn't have a uh, a conventional 
uh, chronological narrative structure. Mm-hmm. Whatever, you know, it's it's time jumping all over the place. And at first and it's annoying and then you get obsessed with exactly it. Exactly what yeah. I was going to say. I was like, I was so annoyed Same. at the beginning. I was, I was like, like, oh, like, fuck Why sake. did you start at the end? What are you adding yeah. by having shown us the end? I, I would have exactly preferred if you'd started at the beginning. And then... Yes, yep. as exactly as you said. I'm like halfway through the movie, it clicks what they're doing, and I'll talk about it in spoiler street. And I'm I, like, it is very okay. clever. Like and baby sad from Dirty Dancing. When I'm wrong, I, I say, say I'm wrong. wrong, and nobody it got better. Put so Zendaya in a corner. By the end, when they were doing the flashbacks, I was like, <laughs> yeah, the flashbacks. <laughs> they're so good. Are used. The editing in this movie it's is so good. excellent, and they use. Music so The past, good. Yeah, even the past from like a day ago. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly like, yeah, you're like, you're in the middle, you're mostly in the, the present, a tennis match. And then suddenly like, you're into set three and then here's what happened yesterday. And you're like, oh my God, <laughs> set three, so the stakes good. just became even and bigger. Then we, there's like two different scores in the film. And at the beginning, much like with the time jumping where when I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. I was like, the music is too much for me. I'm not here for this kind of music. It's too loud. It's too in my face. By I had the, the end, opposite. I was like, music's pumping, music's pumping. Like the music. When the music came on, I was like, like, hopping off my seat with excitement. I, I had the opposite reaction. I th- from the beginning, I was like, the the the, the score is like. A, it's like a I, I don't know much about dance music but I don't know is it like house or club it's just like it's like being in a nightclub it's really intense in a, at, a, at a very sort of and it, it, at first it's like unexpected I'm it's watching really a tennis unexpected. match which is a very silent game <laughs> normally and you, you know it's very just uh, that's uh, why I didn't like it at the start because it was like it, it's so typically um, these days and we often notice when we watch older movies over on our Patreon like music used to be much more dominant in films right as in like the score used to be incredibly loud and like invasive and like that's really died down and then this movie is just like we are going to throw the score in your face we're going to turn the volume up way louder than what you're used to hearing scores anymore and it's so it's such a stylish it's film. awesome and throughout the whole movie I was thinking for later for now I was like talk about the score talk about the score talk about the <laughs> score because we, don't, forget we it. don't take notes by the end um, when the music came on I was like and then <laughs> but then the credits rolled up and it said Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross and I was like of course it's Trent Reznor okay. and Atticus Ross the two the two of two of the absolute all timers when it comes to to, to scores um, I think we have to talk and about it, like it has their fingerprints all over it how it's good a fantastic Zendaya is. score she's Zend- a producer oh in this film oh my god Zendaya. like we were just saying when you went to see Dune that like she's the best thing in it She's a phenomenon. She's like, a superstar. She, I mean, she's known by one name, as is right, when you wear this much of a superstar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's... Like, the other two actors are so good. And so yet, it's Josh O'Connor and Mike Feist, who I, I, I was not familiar with, we but don't know they're him. both so good. In so there. good. Everyone is and fantastic. Then, but they're both so good, but, like, the movie works because of her charisma. Yeah, the whole movie and the characters are revolving Everything around her. around her. And then I saw she's a producer, not just like an executive you producer, there, but when you it? have producer, like you're a real producer, do you know what I mean? Um, so she's all over. She's been out promoting it everywhere. Like she's doing, like she's doing like proper publicity work, and she's out there in like really cool tennis themed outfits and stuff. And our cinema, which is always dead was super busy and there's a lot of teenagers in it and that's because Zendaya's in this and she's been out promoting yeah she's got she's got the Gen Z pull yeah yeah and like you need that like you need big movie stars to launch movies and also I kind of remembered halfway through it oh yeah of course she's been in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or no Spider-Man Homecoming which is the biggest movie of all time there's a reference to Into the Spider-Verse in this yeah yeah. that's what that's what reminded me she'd been in Spider-Man that was like the biggest box office of all time for one of the Marvel movies when it came out wasn't it or for that demographic, I remember there being no loads way home. of. Yeah, right, I remember yeah. there being loads of statistics around how like there was such a young audience going to see it. Well, do so you remember between we Euphoria, saw... Spider Man, June, like she's just such a superstar. That's, you're right. She's got the four quadrants there. Well, you know she's, she's also got most really, of the quadrants. She's a singer. She's she a really was a singer first, singer. right? Yeah. So like yeah. she's just so famous. But like to be in this and June in the same month. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, yeah, close enough. Very um, close. Yeah, I mean, wow. Now, I think this movie I read was supposed to come out last year, but was delayed because of the writer's strike. Or sorry, the actor's strike. Oh, right, okay. Because I guess they maybe, I don't know, they wanted to promote it. It's fascinating um, to see, well, I'm, I'm glad they held off. It's fascinating to see Josh O'Connor in this role because the last role we know him from, Aisha, which is a movie we mentioned at the beginning, which is like a very serious Irish movie, a very brilliant Irish movie about um, people who are seeking asylum in Ireland. And he plays an Irish guy. And we were so bowled away at the time that it was we thought he was Irish it was the best Irish accent, accent we've ever heard an actor do it's very good yeah and uh, 
and he's very like quiet character in it he's brilliant he's so different in this film and i love when you see it now and neither of us have seen the crown but i love when you watch an actor in two different projects and they're just so completely different yeah. it makes you like quite in awe of their range he's so cheeky in this and i was saying today like he played prince charles in the crown and so did dominic west and he actually reminds me of Dominic West. Like he's got that real energy that Dominic West had in The Wire. Like he he's got the same. Like McNulty. He's got the same shit-eating grin. Yeah, he does. That McNulty he's has. He's so good. And then the other guy who we didn't know, Mike Reed. Like it took me a while to Mike warm Feist. to. Sorry, Feist. Mike Feist. It took me a while to warm to him just because I knew the other two actors and I didn't know him. But I thought he was brilliant. What's so good about it is, and this never normally happens, right? Like when we're watching a Rocky movie, obviously we want Rocky to beat Apollo Creed, right? Throughout this movie, I actually kept shifting over who I wanted to win, yeah. which is very satisfying then because you're so invested. I was like, I, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like I was just so invested in them. Right, I think we should go to spoilers though. Yeah, let's do it. Only to say, yeah, I highly recommend this <laughs> to anybody, oh, yeah, if you didn't anybody realize. in the four quadrants who are <laughs> aware of who Zendaya is, which is apparently everyone in the world. Now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, everyone should go and see it, and it's brilliant. It's fantastic. It's yeah. right. It's just like this movie's propulsive. I kept. I realized and during interesting. the film. I was actually just like beaming because I was so happy. I was it's, like, this is so good. It's thr- it's genuinely thrilling. It's very interesting. The, the, um, pa- the relationship dynamics are fascinating and actually often teeter into like, not quite as erotic as Dave promised, but like definite rom-com vibes. Like there's some humour it, in it. It's very, it's very it's sexual, sexy. It's sexually charged. But it wasn't you know? an erotic thriller. That's a different no, kind of genre. No. <laughs> um, but it is sexually charged. It also has like, very like incredibly good friendship dynamics romantic relationship well, dynamics like just all fascinating stuff i would say that each of the three actors had great chemistry with each other yeah like, with each of them anytime Every, yeah. any of the two actors were on screen together so the whole like there was a fucking en- energy yeah, there was an electricity anyway um yeah so spoilers uh, well, actually we'll take a, a quick you might hear a quick ad here and then we'll come back for spoiler street all right, so we have just turned on to Spoiler Street for Challengers. Full spoilers here. Let's talk. I guess do you want to just talk about the ending. We no, the I end? want to say that like, say? I love that the whole ma- the whole match was actually just a kind of like C grade minor like challenging game. It wasn't like what what always happens in a sports movie is it's always like it's the, the final. US Open final. Yeah, yeah. It's Wimbledon. It's something big like. Um, but, but that's so, so, so satisfying. It's so clever because they're at such opposite ends of the spectrum um, competitively yeah. that they had to meet in the middle. Exactly. And that made it more charged. And what was interesting is that you would assume, as is outlined in the sauna scene, that. The sauna scene was so sauna good. Sauna scene was great. So good. It, it, that um, uh, Art um, Donaldson. Um, has you know is is the one of the one he's going to the US Open he's one of the world's biggest players but he he has more to lose way more to oh, lose yeah. than it's like it's so embarrassing for him to go to exactly so way more to stressful to the tournament and lose like um but also so that made I it fascinating that, like, he's like yeah i'm like you know i'm a famous tennis player you're a loser and then um but but, Josh, yeah, but Josh Zweig has like, all the power in that but moment Josh O'Connor's like yeah but you've never beaten me yeah and he means in both love and tennis because he broke up with Zendaya like like when yeah. he, I love that scene when him and Zendaya were fighting and he's like you can't coach me I'm not your cheerleader I'm your peer. we're peers yeah. and she didn't like it and I think what's so fascinating about the film is she always wants to be in control like she's a yeah. control freak and at the end when he did that thing with the tennis racket which we knew was gonna happen <laughs> and she <laughs> lost the power because she was trying to control him and the husband and it's so like I was rooting for her I was rooting for the husband I was rooting for Josh O'Connor like I really wanted Josh O'Connor to win but like at the same time and I felt bad for Zendaya in that like you feel terrible for her character because of course like she had such a promising career and then she received that injury which she blames him for even though it's not actually his fault but like it's so good the way they kind of do it all backwards and you learn like why does she hate him so much but then they like keep having sex Um, it just did you, so did, good. did you notice um, the, again, back to how they structured that, that game running throughout the movie as the sort of b- spine of the movie, mm-hmm. that the flashbacks were mirroring the sets of the game. So 
Donaldson, so Zweig won the first set, right? He, uh-huh. got, he won it 6-2. And then we see him winning Zendaya. And then Zendaya. in the flashback, yeah, he's winning. He's got all the control. He's winning Zendaya. Then, then we flick to the second set, which is act two of the film, and suddenly it flips, and Donaldson wins that 6-2, and we're viewing in the past. He's, he um, wins Zendaya. He's winning Zendaya. And, so, and, and, then, and then we're down to the tiebreak where... In the third act, we have no like, <laughs> no idea. it's all to play for. Um, yeah, like the um, like Zendaya had quite some night the night before the the game. I thought that like, was all handled was so good, really good. Like, this, I, I love they, this, they like, had such chemistry, her and um, Josh, uh, Connor, Josh O'Connor. But yeah. also her and the husband in that scene where he's like, "I'm quitting tennis," and she's like, "Okay," and then he's like. She's like, do you want me to tell you I'll break up with you if you lose? Like, they have this really weird dynamic that we never quite get to the bottom of. Well, it's very like, interesting. obsessed with her. But yeah, like, he, he's eyes stuff, on her lap. It's very subservient. I have to say, the sequence at near the beginning, when they're all teenagers and Zendaya goes back to their bedroom, was, that's when I was like, this film is brilliant. Like, that, I think that was the sequence that drew, drew me in, like the complete control she had over the two of them yeah. like Josh O'Connor's kind of having a laugh but the other guy's really serious when she got them kissing each other and then she's like right I'm out of here bye it was yeah, so funny the she, there was so many funny moments but she always had yeah. the power throughout you know it, it, throughout the whole movie she, she held the power until the very end when they are communicating with each other Without her. Without her. And, and I, like, she love, looks lost. And she, oh, she's pissed. They've got a secret code. They're angry at each other. But she doesn't know what's happening. She doesn't like that. And yeah. the, the other thing is, she. I love how the dialogue kept um, echoing throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. And she says early on at one point, you know, when she first meets them, that the yeah, tennis is a relationship. Yeah. She was in a relationship with that person. It's like they were in love for that moment. Yeah. And, and that's what we enter into in that tie break where they decide they actually decide to park Zendaya. They, they both shut her out. Yeah, they just both want to win. And they, No, it's not even... No, I really don't think about it. I, I, think the, I think what the movie's saying is... They're like, let's boogie. They finally return to each other. Yeah, And right. their relationship, and it ends literally with them hugging. I know. So, so that's what happened, and I love that they and she's did. Re- she's like... It's like the one thing she does, because she knows a really intimate stuff about them from when they were kids, but like, she doesn't know about that. Exactly. That's, yeah. them, rega- that's them regaining their friendship from also, Josh her. Josh O'Connor she, loves when his friend gets feisty about Zendaya because remember earlier on when he was like blatantly trying to break them up Josh O'Connor was like beaming he was like I love this for you you're finally yeah, getting yeah. a bit he's of getting like, his passion yeah. but, that's, but that's what that, that's what um, he has lost later in life and yeah. this, she loved the passion she loved the the, the, the fight that he had and I love he, all the he, little he, things he, he's less interesting to her because he doesn't have that anymore he yeah, wants he's to not, retire he doesn't have the drive I love the secret just a little bit like He's eating his like special fructose gel or whatever. <laughs> and then Josh O'Connor is just like eating a banana and he waves it at him. And uh, and then I found it really fascinating the scene when him and Zendaya meet in the alleyway and she's like, stop pretending you're poor, like you're super rich. And I was like, oh, that's actually another that really interesting there that yeah. we didn't know about. Like we thought he was really down and out. Now, just because you have rich parents doesn't mean you have access to their money or whatever. But like, it's she kind of made out like he could if he wanted, but he's trying to make it on his own. Well, it's, it's a role d- he's playing, and even even when they have their breakup scene, she accuses him of the same thing. You're you're messaging me, you know, saying that uh, you know um, you, it's not going your way, it's unfair. What he's he's portraying the put upon professional yeah. who's brilliant, but things aren't going his way, you know. Yeah. He likes that. It's he a likes role. He's comfortable in it. Yeah. But it's funny because when he's <laughs> chatting up that girl in the bar, just because he like needs somewhere to stay. He kind of implies like he has gone to Wimbledon and stuff. Like he's semi-successful. Like, like to me, someone who's been to Wimbledon and the US, o- US Open is like, that's an amazing tennis player. But in this level, like they don't consider it like that. But like I love the way the he, the her husband is like, getting like physiotherapy, like nutrition, like getting everything. But then when you come face to face with your like original opponent like that, like nothing can beat the mind games. What was so good at the very beginning is that we didn't even know they knew each other until the first flashback. Like, yeah. The film takes its time getting there. I, did, I didn't know that yeah, either, even so even after having seen the trailer. So good. Um, I absolutely love it. I, do you know what I was thinking during it as well? You know the way we were saying that he, the writer is married to Celine Song? I was thinking of the scene in Past Lives. No spoilers for that. It's not now, a right? spoiler yeah, yeah, yeah. for past lives, but her husband, like it's based loosely on her life, or inspired by her life maybe, and her husband in that film is a writer because obviously this guy, and he says, "I feel like if this was a movie, I'd be the guy like people aren't rooting for, or they'd be rooting for the other guy." 
and it just made me think <laughs> that that was a very complex relationship and this is very complex relationships and like what a talented couple I wonder if do they ever write stuff back, together. Back to what you said at the beginning then. Do you think they were sitting around the kitchen table <laughs> I don't know. absorbing each other's scripts? I'm just obsessed with them now. <laughs> I'm like, they're like the ultimate coolest couple I've well, ever well, heard of in my life. I think... Because they met on a writer's retreat, right? Well, well I don't... In the movie. And she said it was kind of based on her life. I think it was based on some experiences of her life. I don't think... It, it's not necessarily directly it's not, autobiographical. No, it's not. But anyway, I like to think that they're just sitting around like giving each other nuanced characters. I mean, you're right. Yeah, they both wrote incredibly complex relationship dramas. Th- um, they'd make a great pairing as well as a back to back. I know they really would work well together. Yeah, they're, they're both about um, uh, power dynamics and well, well, no, the p- past lives isn't about power dynamics. No, really. but it's, it's no, but they're both about like past. You know what would have been cross and paths, What could have been? Yeah, that's now, true. You want to talk about the final match at the final of the match. That was the main thing you wanted yeah, to Yeah, well, well, I thought it, I just thought it was a great ending. Really good. It's I mean, just so ending. incredibly and tense and And it got more, and more frenetic by the end because you would be there like sweating. They're like trying to beat each other. They're like having this relationship dance, whatever the hell they're doing. It suddenly turns into like GoPro shots. It turns into like at one point they're clearly playing on top of glass and the camera's beneath them. So you're looking at their feet. There's like drone shots. There's like how many... I will the say... The director was just having so much fun with the end. Some of that I found frustrating. I think 90% of it was very good and interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's always a challenge with um, sports movies that are potentially less visually exciting, like like tennis, I would argue. So I think they did a good job of trying to, you know, play around with that format. Like what didn't work for me and made me feel sick was the POV shots from both of their views <laughs> I at one them. point where, and it was all shaky cam, and I was like, no. What, but but I mean, you know, they're putting cameras on on tennis balls or at least they're, yeah, they're exactly. giving you the effect that there's a camera on the tennis I love ball. how they're just dripping with sweat and then at one point they have Zendaya's husband just staring down the camera lens with yeah, just sweat, sweat dripping on the camera I mean I, the, the movie it's it's very interesting visually yeah. I love um, I love that it is um, it conveys visual exposition really well even mm-hmm. at the beginning just portraying how successful they are as a couple with her you oh know um, feeding back on an ad in a paper when and she's what, having sex with like, Joshua Connor in the car and then that poster is up behind them in the storm kind of like oh yeah very blowing. clever I mean and the movie so also good. is so um, good at portraying you know what like most of this movie the tension is portrayed by what's not being said do you know what I mean like it's not dialogue heavy but the dialogue is excellent and I really admire that about it it's the it's the what's not being said between them if I was being in, critical in liking moment. some of the dialogues a bit Pat like um you mentioned it earlier, but like they use some of the dialogue, same dialogue over and over again. Like, are you in love with me? Who wouldn't be? And I'm like, do people in real life make callbacks? They call that, yeah. The things they, they said 14 years ago. Because I truly mean this. I can't remember a single thing I said 14 years ago. <laughs> I can't remember a single thing I said to you when <laughs> yeah. we met, when we fell in love. Like, I wouldn't be able to make callbacks to you about our own you're, relationship. You're so right. And he makes even Zweig comes in um, and makes a callback in the sauna room about like something like. Uh, do you think you're going to beat me tomorrow or something? But it was the exact, it was something like that, but it was the exact line he'd said, uh, our, our, yeah, yeah, our exactly. had said to him when we first met them as young people. But yeah. that would have been such an <laughs> incidental thing to say to someone yeah. th- who you've known your entire life. <laughs> it's just I like, love when they're like, when we first meet them as well, though, like they're such best friends. And it's really sad to think that that kind of all ended over like another woman, like a, a woman. Yeah. And like when he's like, oh, I'll let, your, I'll let you in, your granny's going to be there. And then when they, they're both fighting for Sanjay's hand, and then he says, what about my grandmother and he says I hope she has a stroke and then it was like such black humour later on and oh, then they go yeah. his grandmother's the movie. how did she die she had a stroke <laughs> the movie the, the movie <laughs> is funny yeah, it, yeah. It, it actually, you're right it does have a dark sense of humour so, I really can't believe how good it was like I knew it was going to be good just because like I knew people were saying it was good it was electric but I was not expecting it to be like that I'm so impressed did you find though um, I found I found it a hard adjustment at the very beginning um, to um, th- to to believe that Zendaya and him were like a couple, a couple, oh and I had a like, child. As if. I'm, I'm like, no, <laughs> these people are 21. Um, I don't know what age they actually are, but but I think that's just because most of the movie they are quite young, and when they were young, I they they made sense. Oh, I think the then, different timelines how they aged them differently was very good. But then yeah, but later on, I just got comfortable with it and believed it. I don't know. I got into it. I know. I didn't it. think they were too young to have a kid, and like I think what I didn't believe was that like no, no, but they're suppo- with him. But sorry, they're supposed to be 31, and it was just like uh, when I first saw it, they are in their early mid 20s, whatever, and they felt 
just really young to me. And then the movie tells you later on, oh, they're 31 and you've been on this ride with them. So I, I kind of, oh, I halfway through, was like, yeah, I'm fine with them. Being I thought this. the fashion was like really good, how they mixed it around. But I just truly didn't believe she'd, she'd be with such a dweeb. And it only made more sense as the film went on because she got a kick out of him being a dweeb. She wanted to control him. She hadn't been able to control his friend. She'd lost her yeah. temper and she'd like, like when she when she hurts her knee, which is shocking, like it's awful. And then uh, the guy comes to run and rescue her. And then Josh O'Connor tries to come into the room and she's like, get out, just because she's angry. Meanwhile, her, your man is like, get the fuck out. Yeah, he, like, he overcompensates. Like, calm down. But, but it's because he's so obsessed with her. You're so right. The only, the moment she becomes interested in art romantically is, is the moment the op- that he asks, no, it's, no, it's the moment that he asks her to be his coach. Yeah. That's, she, he she offers a her of a that. position of power. Yeah. But also, and she gets a kick out of that. Like, she wants, she only wants to be yeah. in a relationship where she's dominant. Like, exactly. when she's with Josh O'Connor, she's like, they're in bed and like trying to have sex and she just won't stop talking about tennis. And when he says, I don't want to talk about tennis, she gets out of bed and she's like, goodbye. Yeah. Like, they basically broke up because he said, I don't want to talk about tennis. Anyway, we're going to have to go. We're wrapping up. Um, we had such a good time. Message us um, on socials come over to instagram or letterbox or youtube or tiktok and let us know what you think about challengers or come over to at patreon the at the cinema everywhere or come over to patreon.com forward slash the cinema where we do a ton of tv reviews and tell them the t- the theme of our new retro movie yes yeah, so we do we do every month we do um a retro movie watch this month uh, it's a retro future movie so we asked our patrons to come up with movies um that present movies from the past that present a vision of the future that has already passed. Con- <laughs> confused? Really confused. Um, so, <laughs> so, like, if a movie in 1980 had been set in 2000, that would qualify. Yeah, exactly. The, run- the yeah. Running Man set in 2019 has happened. Um, what one was, and we're, we're about to watch, is 2001 A Space Odyssey. That's the winner. So, we're yeah. going to be watching Kathy that has Patreon never seen month. it before. But I have read the book. Uh, so yeah, she has read the book. So I think, uh, and I think you're gonna have a, a very keen to hear your take on it. Um, it's very a, keen to hear your take on it, Dave. Well, I'm even more keen to hear your take <laughs> okay. on it. Okay. Serve return. <laughs> okay. Um, Great. So that's at Patreon.com anyway, forward slash. you know your best friend that you haven't spoken to in 14 years, who I used to make a different movie podcast with. Wait, why are you I'm, holding a ball over I'm, a tennis I'm, racket I'm right me- now? I'm meeting up with him tonight to what record it it, a podcast. <laughs> Don't worry about it. There's nothing to worry about. Um, I'm just telling him that next time we enter a podcast awards, that I want him. Whoever wins the podcast award gets you. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks everyone for listening. Bye. Bye.